Hey ladies and gentlemen. Do you see this channel right here? Her name is Wabi Jung and she has uh she has more than one channel. In another channel she has thousands upon tens of thousands of souls subscribed to her. All right? Now uh this woman claims she went to hell and she did a testimony. It was about 9 minutes long and it's the original one. And I saw that testimony and I looked at it and I prayed to God about it. And that testimony is accurate. You know, she attested to seeing certain things in hell. And I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, show you the original clip, right? Meaning what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description box for the original video. Okay. And then I'm going to put in a link in the description box for the latest videos. Now, uh, in this video right here, okay, um, well, first of all, before I get into that, she was instructed by God in her first video she ever made, it was like nine minutes long, that she's not supposed to add to or take away. And if God says, if you add to what he tells you, add to his word or take away, you'll get seven more plagues, I believe, come upon you. And she would be held accountable for that because it'll cause, you know, it'll obviously cause souls to fall off the path. And if you add to what something God tells you or take away from it, that, that can lead to false prophecy and false divination. It happened to King Saul. You just, I'm not going to get into it. Just read it. He was one time a righteous man. And there were other prophets. What's that other prophet? My son's with me. That was righteous. Balaam. Ba Balaam. Balaam? Yeah. Balaam was another one. He started out righteous. Um, he succumbed to a false prophet, remember? Yeah. And he became a false prophet himself. But I'm not going to get into those stories. You just have to look them up in the scriptures. Excuse me a second. Now, when I do these types of videos, exposing false prophets, people say things, oh, you're insulting them. I'm not insulting them. As far as I'm concerned, I'm defending the cross and I'm doing what God tells me to do, which is to bring the dark forces to light and to be a watchman on the wall and warn the church about people like this. So if you think I'm, I'm insulting them, something's wrong with your head and you got some problems because God said to be a watchman on the wall, read Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, read Deuteronomy. God said to be a watchman on the wall. If you, if you don't blow the trumpet, he's going to help. He's going to hold the blood of those souls upon your head. And I'm not trying to get my father mad. So I'm here to please God. I'm not here to please man. You think I'm insulting people? That's your problem. I don't care what you think. Your thing is you need to take it up with God because I'm doing what the Lord told me to do. Anyway, this individual right here added stuff to her testimony. Okay. I already explained to you how God frowns upon, uh, frowns upon uh, individuals accepting, um, accepting, uh, which we'll call it, individuals accepting uh, donations. God sent out the 12 disciples and told them not to take any money at all because the, 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 the gospel, okay? When you're preaching the gospel, it's a, it's a free gift to all souls. They have a choice to accept the good news that Christ is Lord. And, um, to become born again, baptized, water baptized, repent of their sins, go through the correction, and accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Okay. This woman accepts donations. Now, I could tell she's exploiting God. The first video she ever made about hell was nine minutes long. Um, it looked original. On, you know, it looked like it was original, like, something, like she just talked about it. Okay. Then, she decided to start accepting donations. So... As you look at the videos, as they progress forward, she starts adding stuff. I looked at this video right here and I broke it apart. Now, ladies and gentlemen, heaven is a real place and so is hell. I mean, there are countless testimonies, okay? It's real. But you need to remember one thing. People can fake testimonies too. Satan will send out his minions like this to fake testimonies, okay? He can do that. He will do that to bring you off the path. Satan will also, let's say if there's a real hell, heaven and hell testimony out there, that's 100% true. Satan will do everything in his power to try to falsify that testimony. In other words, to try to get that person to falsely prophesy in that testimony. And that can happen one of two ways. 
that person will start adding their own stuff to that testimony instead of leaving it the way it is, the, the way God had it, okay? Or that person will start taking stuff away. So I'm going to repeat that again. If a person has a true testimony about heaven and hell, Satan can pervert that. It'll make you, he'll make you add stuff or take stuff away, thereby making it false, falsifying it. So telling something true to, to a false testimony. Um, and like I said, you have, you have people that have uh, fake testimonies that never been to heaven or hell, and they're trying to deceive you. They're, sat they're tools of Satan, straight up. Spawn of Satan, okay? This woman went to hell. It's a testimony that's about nine minutes long, and I'm going to see if I... I don't know if I have it on the side here, but uh, she has testimonies that she went to hell. It's nine minutes long. Now, when she had her nine-minute testimony, people were calling her a false prophet, this and that, and all the other. And I said that this testimony she made that's only nine minutes is not false. It's actually true. Okay, so I was standing up for her in that respect. I don't promote her as a prophet. I saw the video, and I can attest to the things that she's seen in there. But then she started making... Um, subordinate videos or she started making uh, consecutive videos subordinate videos okay and one second guys and it doesn't make any sense if you have a testimony of hell on one video why are you going to make subsequent videos Of the testimony in hell. You have to have discernment. If you look at each of her videos, they're different from the last. She keeps adding stuff, okay? Which means she's falsifying the testimony, which makes her a false prophet. You know what she has in this video right here, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to let my son take you to some clips. First of all, copyright. Copyright is a source, a huge source of money. Where is it? I'm going to stop that right now. She has her videos copyrighted. She said in her first testimony, which is nine minutes long, right, that you can use her testimony to help other souls. Why would she care about copyrights, about making money, you know, more than helping other souls? You know what I'm saying? She's copywriting her testimony so she can make money off of it. She's trying to exploit God. And she thinks she's getting away with it, but she's not. So that's the cop. She copyrights her video. She accepts donations. She's making lots of money from these videos. And you got tens of thousands of morons that are watching these testimonies without seeking the counsel of God first to see if this is God's fruit or not. To see if this is true or not. Go to the clip clips. Next, why would you need a full version? I thought the original one was the full version. That's another thing that caught uh, attention. <clears throat> you have to look at something, ladies and gentlemen. All of her testimonies... Okay, I'm going to let you see a clip. All of her testimonies, um, she has different ones. She keeps saying that they're her full testimony. They're an upgraded one. They're this, they're that. The first one, the nine-minute one, was supposedly her full version testimony, which it is, okay? But when she says full version, she's adding stuff to it. She says full version in one video, full version in that, and they have different things added to it. I'm going to give you some examples. Evolution. Yeah. Stop right there. Where is it? Uh. She says in one of her, in the clip in this video, right, that it took God 14 point, yeah, 13.7 billion years, right, to uh, create the great universe. I'm going to take you somewhere here. Hold on one minute. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to point out a couple of things. She said, so I'm going to go back there real quick, and then I'm going to show you something. She said it took God 13.7 billion years to create the earth and the great universe. That's what she said, right? First of all, um, God can create anything in an instant. He doesn't need to wait 13.7 billion years. It doesn't, it, 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 and let me phrase that. It won't take God 13.7 billion years to create something. God can create it in an instant. Secondly, 
Do I believe that God and the angels were around first? According to the book of Genesis, they were. Do I believe they were around for a long time? Yes, I believe so. Okay, and then I believe that God has a perfect plan, a perfect design as to when he made the angels, you know, and then he made humanity and all living things, the planets, the stars, and so forth. If you look in the book of Genesis, it says in the book of Genesis, God made the earth in the earth. He gives the sequence. God made angels. He made the earth. He made the sea. He made existence in six days. And on the seventh day, God rested. And I'm going to show you that as well. So according to the Bible, God made the earth in seven days or six days. I'm sorry. So why is she saying it took 13.7 billion years? It's that what she's telling you here is not in the word of God here. So I'm going to read some things to you out of the scriptures. Just a few things. Um, in the beginning, God created God created the heaven and earth. Okay. And the earth was without form and void and darkness. So I'm going to skip a little bit and I'm going to show you here. Okay. One second. The earth was without form and darkness, right? Um, it was a void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. So God said, let there be light. And then there was light. That was on the first day. On the second day, God said, uh, let there, that the waters will be created and let it divide. No, God said, let the firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters. It's on the second day. And then, um, let me make sure I got this right. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the midst. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which was under the firmament from the waters which was above the firmament. I believe that that's land. Am I correct? Firmament. I believe that's land. Okay. I'm, again, I believe it's either land or a barrier to divide the waters. Okay. Because God was getting ready to make land next. God called the firmament heaven. Okay. So if a firmament is a barrier where God, um, if God's saying that there used to be a void. Okay. For everything. So God made a barrier to separate heaven, to separate the earth, to separate the sea. Obviously, God made a barrier to separate the spiritual realms from the physical realms, just so we get that straight. Okay. God made that barrier. Um, and then we're going to proceed forward. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. God made dry land. And God made dry land. I believe that was on so the second day. God made the firmament. We already know he made water. I believe God made dry land on the third day. God made grass. You know, that was right. God made grass. God made dry land. And in the fourth day, it goes into talking about God made two lights. The sun's the greater light. The moon's the lesser light. That's the fourth day. The fifth day it talks about how God made um, every living creature on earth. Okay. The sixth day, um, God made man. And he made the fowls of the air. I'm just skimming through this, but you can see it yourself. And, uh, the seventh, and he made the creepy crawlies, you know, insects and seventh day God rested. Okay. So remember a day for God, a day for God can be longer. So God doesn't see things as we do. God's time frames are different than man's. So man can see day as 24 hours. God can see a day as a year, a thousand years. You know that in the book of Daniel, it says that one week represents a year. I mean, a week represents seven years. One, one uh, year represents a day. And then there's another part in scriptures that talks about one year representing, a, um, one day representing a thousand years. Something like that, right? Remember? I'm um, talking to my son here. So anyway, what well, my point is, God makes different, God's plans for time and how they work and how he sees things. Are different than man. God's seasons are different than man. That's the bottom bottom line I'm trying to make here to you. Okay. She's telling you all he made the earth in 13.7 billion years. That doesn't make any sense. It's not even biblical. Here's another thing. Okay. She's teaching you people about evolution. I'm going to prove that to you. She said 13.7 billion years. Okay. That's what she said right there. 13.7 billion years that God made earth. The absolute dis oh. I'm going to go in deeper. She said the absolute deities, God, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Son spent more than 13.7 billion years making the earth. Two things. 13.7 billion years, that is a doctrine of uh, evolution. 
13.7 billion years of evolution in 8.5 seconds. You have a person explaining evolution. She's teaching you people evolution. Evolution meaning, if you know your science, okay, meaning that men evolved from apes. That's what she's telling you people. She's telling you people that God created monkeys and men evolved from apes. If you know your science, how, how evo um, evolution says that man started out, remember, as a tadpole and then evolved into apes. So that's what she's telling you. She's telling you people that God actually started the world as um, God started the earth, right? And God started uh, hum the living, all living life as cells. And then they evolved into tadpoles and frogs and fish and, and apes and then humans. She's telling you God created humanity via evolution. That's not true. That's not even in the Bible. That's one proof she's a false prophet. Okay. Here's the second proof to break it down for you. She's telling you people that the absolute deity is God, the Holy Spirit, and the Son. Do you know that that's Catholic doctrine, ladies and gentlemen? According to the word of God, Jesus Christ is one with the Father. He's one with the Son. One God, like it says in the book of Romans, one God. And I'm going to prove that to you all right now. Hold on a second. Then I'm going to go into others. I'm going to leave the clip of the video below, okay? You will not believe the other crazy stuff this woman thought up. Thought up. I'm, I'm, I'm just being real. So God never made man with evolution. God frowns upon that. That's demon's doctrine. If you read the book of Enoch, and if you even read the scriptures of the Holy Bible, it shows that God cast out certain angels, right? He sent, first of all, he sent them as watchmen on the wall, on, so to speak. He sent them as watchmen on earth to watch over mankind. Instead, according to the book of Genesis, they gave into the flesh, they took on human form, and they made it with the locals. Part of the book of Genesis talks about demons breeding with humans, so to speak. Angels, fallen angels breeding with humans. Okay, and they bred a race of giants, but I'm not going to get into that. They taught humans various things about astrology, about science, about philosophy, which is demonic knowledge. It's not knowledge from God. Everything that God creates, the man, enemy always perverts. Um, perverts. I told y'all that. So they taught man about mathematics. Mathematics that has occultic symbols. They taught the man about... Uh, Black magic, all the magical arts, and so forth. You got to read the book of Enoch for yourself. But they taught man about all that. So, anyway, she's telling you all three deities. In the first testimony she made, she recognized Jesus Christ only as the living God. She didn't say the Holy Spirit, this, that, and the other. She said Jesus Christ is the, is is God. Remember the first testimony? Speak up. Yeah. She said that Jesus Christ is. Is one with the Holy Spirit, one with the Father. In the first testimony, in this testimony here, she's telling you people that three deities made uh, everything. Now, first of all, that's Catholic doctrine. Your Catholics believe Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They worship three deities. The Christians only worship one deity, one true God, who is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God, Ab the very same God of Abraham. Jesus Christ manifested as Jesus. Jesus Christ manifested in the flesh. As a man, Jesus Christ, okay? The spirit of the living God united with the Father when he was on this earth. In other words, the Holy Spirit fell upon Jesus Christ in the book of Acts. Remember that? Yeah. Fell upon Jesus Christ as soon as he was baptized in the Jordan River and then he started performing those miracles, you remember? Yeah. He started performing miracles even before that. But what I'm saying is that it, it was proof that the Father's Spirit united with Jesus Christ, okay? The Father, who is Jesus Christ in the flesh, united with the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, proving that Jesus Christ is one God. Not three, one God, the very same God of Abraham. Because God can do anything. God can manifest in the flesh. Now, what she's telling you here is what the Islam, uh, Muslims believe. They believe that Christians worship three gods, and that's not true. Catholics worship three gods. So she's teaching you people here about, uh, I'm not talking about here in the verses, not the Bible. I'm talking about in her video. Let me correct myself. In her video, she's teaching you about Catholic doctrines. Okay. Um, what else can I tell you? So according to the word of God, I'm going to take you there real quick. 
It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Proof Jesus Christ is God. I'm going to let you see the scriptures for yourself. Okay? Now, she has other crazy stuff in here. She has other things like uh, God has... Uh, God's angels have machine guns at their shopping malls and in heaven. She also she also has um, a moon crescent and a star in her video. That's an Islamic symbol. Um, you can forward to it. <laughs> she has other crazy stuff like uh, crazy stuff like uh, there's a mall. Pyramid. Pegasus and a pyramid. Look at this. Pegasus is a demon. You know that. If you know your Greek mythology, she, Pegasus is a demon. A pyramid, which is satanic. Okay? She has a moon crescent with a star. That's that's a symbol of Islam. It's a Wiccan symbol. She has other crazy stuff that God has a mall, a shopping mall. Look at this. Where's that crescent symbol at? That's the plane. Oh, that's the plane. She said God has a plane. But this is she got some you know, psychotic stuff in here. Okay? Other stuff she's got in here, she's talking about, uh, oh, God got a research facility for science. God doesn't have that. God doesn't have moles. God do God's angels don't have any um, guns. That's worldly. God's angels, according to the Bible, look at this. Oh, she says that God's angels, that there's shopping malls up there. Oh, and that they have fast food restaurants up there. She talks about how... Uh, How the angels, right? Look at this. She said there's restaurants up there. She says how the angels, right, have fast food restaurants and that they work there flipping burgers and then they um leave. You know how ridiculous that sounds, ladies and gentlemen? All the worldly stuff. God does not do yoga. See that? That's yoga. Yoga is a Hindu practice. God does not do yoga. I'm running out of time. But the bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, all this stuff is worldly. She also said that God has a research center to cure diseases. God doesn't need a research center to cure diseases. According to the Bible, God performed miracles when he was here, when he laid hands on a person that had leper, another one that was blind, another one that had um, boils. Okay? Um, look at the crescent moon. This proof. Okay? So, I'm going to stop here. You people need to be careful who you listen to. This person's a false prophet, and Jesus Christ, is she listening? You are, the Jesus Christ is against her, is against her. Jesus Christ is going to deal with her, because God told her in that nine-minute testimony not to add to it, not to take away, and she did exactly that. And she caused a lot of people to fall off the path. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no shopping malls, there's no machine guns. According to the Bible, the angels have swords. There's no flying horses. That's Pegasus. That's demonic. There's no fast food restaurants or shopping malls. I don't know what's in her head. She's crazy. And um, it's obvious Satan got to her. But don't let Satan get to you. This woman's a false prophet. And if I was your name is Wabi Jung, be very careful who you listen to and discern the spirits. Test the spirits if they are of God. Because this person's, her testimony here does not align with the word of God. As far as I'm concerned, it's false.